So in this video we're talking about weighted graphs, shortest paths, and a very famous mathematical problem, the traveling salesperson problem. So we're going to jump straight into it. We've got six towns, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and these towns have roads between them. And if I asked you to get from town A to town F, you've got some options here. You can go from A to B to D to F. You can go from A to C, scenic route through D and F. You can go A, B, E, and F. There are a lot of different... You could even go A, C, D, B, E, and F if you wanted to. There are lots of different ways to get from A to F. But now I'm going to ask you to get from A to F, covering the shortest distance possible. Now to do that, I'm going to have to draw this graph as a weighted graph. Now this is a weighted graph. Now a weighted graph just means that each edge has been given a weight, a number, now that weight might be a distance in kilometers, it might be a time in minutes it takes to get from here to here, it might be a cost in terms of getting some information from one party to another party. It doesn't matter, but each edge has a weight. Now the, if we added up all of these edges, we would have the total weight of this graph. I'm not going to do that. but. That's what we talk about when we talk about weighted graphs. Now, in terms of thinking about shortest paths, again, when we talked about Hamiltonian, semi-Hamiltonian, we said there's no really good ways to go about it. In the same way, when it comes to shortest path, there's no shortcuts here. You've really got to sort of trial and error this and look at it and sort of puzzle your way through it. So, But there are some obvious things that we can do. So, for instance, from C to D, if I was moving from point C to point D, there's no way that I'm ever going to travel along this road here. This road is useless. Because why would I take a 20 meter, 20 kilometer road when I could take a 10 kilometer road? So that's pretty easy so far. Now let's just do a problem. Let's try to get from A to F in the shortest way possible. And I'm just going to start at point A and I'm going to consider what is the shortest way to get from A to B. Okay, there's only one way, well, multiple ways to get from A to B. You can take this road, which is 20 kilometers, or you could sort of go that way, which is 80 kilometers, or you could go that way, which is like 100 kilometers. But obviously, the best way is just to take that short road, which is 20. Okay, let's consider now from A to C. What's the best way to get from A to C? Now, you could take this direct route, which is 60 kilometers, or you could go from A, B, and then B to C. So the fastest way to get from A to C is not by taking the direct road, it's by going the long way, or the short way around, A to B and B to C. So I'm gonna write 40 there, and I'm just gonna write via B. Okay, so we know we're not going directly, we have to pass through B to do that. Okay, what about A to D? You might want to pause the video and think about what is the shortest way to get from A to D. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can go A to C to D, that's 70 kilometers. You can go A to B to C to D, that's 20 plus 20 plus 10, that's 50. Uh, you can go A to B to D, that's 20 plus 30, that's also 50. You could go to A to B to E, E to D, that's 20 plus 20 plus 20, that's 60. Um, that's all of the ones that I can find that are likely scenarios. Obviously, you can go like all the way around here, but that's like going to be way too big. So I'm going to choose A to B to D because I'm only passing through a vertex here. So I'm going to say 20 plus 30 is 50, and that's via B as well. Okay, what about A to E? Okay, A to E, uh, 20 plus 20, that's 40. That looks like the shortest distance. Anything else is going to be quite roundabout. So 40, and again, that's via B. And uh, what about, now that I've done all of those, A to B, A to C, A to D, A to E, now I should start considering, well, how am I going to get to F? 
Well, it seems obvious that passing through B is a good option. So we're going to go from A to B. We're definitely going to do that. Now, once we're at B, we've covered 20 kilometers so far. Should I go from B to E or should I go from B to D? Well, if I go from B to E to F, that's going to be 20 plus 30, which is 50. If I go from B to D to F, that's going to be um, 30 plus 50, which is 80. That's a big number. So, I think I'm pretty well done here. The shortest path from A to F is A to B, which is 20 kilometers, B to E, which is 20 kilometers, E to F, which is 30 kilometers. The shortest path from A to F is 70 kilometers. Now, you really want to sort of work through it pretty systematically, because if you don't, you might miss a trick and you might go longer than you really had to. Now, you can't talk about shortest paths without mentioning this famous problem, the traveling salesperson problem. And this traveling salesperson problem is uh, easy to understand. You're a traveling salesperson. You've got to get to every town exactly once, and you need to get back to hometown. Now, I don't care which town you decide is home. It might be F, D, E, B, C, A. Which town should you start and finish in, and which roads should you take so that you spend, uh, so that you travel the least kilometers. Now, I'm not going to do that question now because it's one of those questions that's very, very, very hard. The easiest way that we have to do it is to write a computer program for it and make the computer program start at F and try every combination of town, of route. Start at E and try every combination. Start at B and try every combination. D, C, A and try every single combination and then find the shortest combination. There are no short, there are some small shortcuts to solving the traveling salesperson problem, but it is a famous mathematical problem with no mathematical solution. You've got to what we call brute force the answer by throwing it at a computer and seeing what comes out. Okay, that's networks, that's a weighted graph. We've just done a shortest path problem using essentially a brute force method, and we've spoken about the traveling salesperson problem.